Thank you for joining me for this community briefing on COVID-19 and our local response. Joining me again is interpreter Margie Prop. Thank you, Margie, for being here today. And thank you to the media and all our residents who are tuning in to learn more about how to protect themselves, um, their loved ones, and of course, our community. We want to remind everyone to visit our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov for the latest information. That site does include information in multiple languages uh, beyond English. This is a somber moment for our community. Today we received word that we lost a Lincoln resident to COVID-19. This is the first death attributable to COVID-19 in our city, and that brings the number of deaths statewide to 13. Uh, on behalf of everyone who calls Lincoln home, I offer our deepest sympathy to the family and friends of those who have lost, lost loved ones to this terrible disease. And along with this sobering news for our community, we also learned that Lincoln and Lancaster County have had five new lab-confirmed cases of COVID-19 today, bringing the total number of lab-confirmed cases to 39. At this point, 13 are community-acquired cases. Here to provide more details uh, on the health department's investigations of these cases is Interim Health Director Pat Lopez. Along with the 39 lab confirmed cases <clears throat> and the death, we now have 1196 negative tests and currently have 16 pending uh, tests at the public health lab. The health department is also monitoring 110 individuals due to travel history or exposure. Nebraska now has 521 cases of COVID positive individuals and 13 deaths. As more testing in the community is being completed, we will continue to see an increase in positive cases, as we've mentioned. We do have community spread in Lincoln, and residents should assume there is a risk of exposure anytime they are out in the public where other people are present. All of us should be staying home as much as possible to prevent the spread of the virus. And when you are sick or someone in your household is sick with symptoms, you should self-quarantine and isolate from others. One of our main considerations when we report information to you is that we maintain the confidentiality of the individuals. Now that Lincoln has more cases, we can provide some new information to you regarding the cases in general without compromising confidentiality. You'll see a graph on the screen. This graph looks like the number of cases, this graph looks at the number of cases completed and the number tested positive by age group. The largest aid bra bracket in Lincoln is 30 to 49. So as you can see, that is also the age group that has had the most tests. While we don't track the specific occupations of those tested, we would also expect that most of our frontline healthcare workers and first responders perhaps would fall into this age category. Right now, the age group with the highest percentage of positive tests is 50 to 64. This group is likely to be more susceptible due to a higher percentage of them having the underlying medical conditions that we are aware of. We were asked about providing the information broken down by zip code. And our case numbers are still too low to provide that breakdown uh, and enable us to maintain confidentiality. Um, you'll see in Omaha, they may be able to do that, but that is because they have more cases and because they have a larger population in each zip code. So confidentiality for them is not an issue. We will begin to uh, have these charts available at the website covid19.lincoln.ne.gov tomorrow. The topics that we discuss in these briefings focus on what we can all do to protect the health and safety of everyone in Lincoln. First and foremost, we continue to share the clear recommendations of the public health officials in our community, and those are to stay home as much as possible. If To stay home if you are sick, that if you are sick, everyone in your household should also stay home and self-quarantine, 
to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with uh, soap and warm water, and to cover your nose and mouth when you cough or sneeze, to do that with a tissue ideally that you then toss in the wastebasket, and to keep six feet of distance between yourself and others and to wear a cloth face covering when you are out in public and may have difficulty maintaining a six foot separation from other people. Until we have a vaccine, these are our best means of slowing the spread of COVID-19. They are ways that we can all be empowered to prevent our hospitals from becoming overwhelmed and to save lives. These strategies work and they are especially critical if we venture out of our homes and exercise to exercise in our parks. Today's topic for this briefing is how to play it safe in the parks. And here with me to provide guidance on this topic is City Council Member Sandra Washington, who is also a former Associate Regional Director for the National Park Service. Our Parks Director, Lynn Johnson, is also available to help answer questions. And with schools switching to online learning and more residents working from home, utilizing our parks and trails uh, to get exercise and fresh air is a healthy way to cope with the disruptions and challenges that we currently face. However, to get through to the other side of this pandemic, it's extremely important to follow the recommendations of health officials, and that is true when you're using our parks. We're here to discuss the safe use of parks with you today so that we can continue to keep them open and available to us all. Our friends up at the road in Omaha, unfortunately, have seen large gatherings in their parks, and that poses a threat to the health and safety of the Omaha community. Just half an hour ago, Omaha Mayor Jean Stothert held a press conference during which she announced that she is closing all 250 of Omaha's parks. That is something we do not want to have to do in Lincoln. Again, with your faithful observance of the guidelines we discussed today, we should not have to do that. But this ultimately will come down to the choices that we all make when we use our parks and trails. In order to keep everyone safe, it's important to practice physical distancing in our parks and on our trails, keeping six feet of separation between yourself and others, and to not share items and equipment that could pass the virus between people. Both adults and children need to stay off equipment at playgrounds and parks. The Parks and Recreation Department placed signage on playgrounds, letting people know that playgrounds are closed. This equipment is not sanitized, and touching it could be another way to transfer the virus from person to person. The Parks and Recs Department also placed signs on play courts, reminding people to practice safe physical distancing. And for the same reason, we should not be playing team sports in our parks, especially close contact sports like basketball, football, and soccer. To, say, to stay safe, do not play contact sports and only share frequently touched items like basketballs, volleyballs, baseballs, tennis balls, frisbees, and other equipment with members of your own household. Anecdotally, I heard that there were people playing volleyball in Holmes Lake this past weekend. Now, in the past, that has been a wonderful choice, but during a pandemic, it is not. We do not want a group of people potentially spreading the virus to each other with each bump set and spike of the volleyball. We know the virus can live on surfaces for hours, if not days, and it just isn't worth the potentially deadly consequences. In addition, we continue to see team sport uh, practice at parks and fields. That is not safe during this health emergency. The Parks Department will be locking fenced play fields and posting signs to remind people that these team sports activities, even practice, just aren't safe right now. Now at this time, I would like to invite up Councilwoman Washington to speak with more details and wisdom on how all of us can play it safe in the parks. Thank you, Mayor. As the mayor said, it's good to get outside for physical activity and to connect with nature as spring arrives in Lincoln, but we must do it in a way that keeps us all safe. Walking, biking, golf, and jogging are great ways to enjoy the out of doors in our great parks, yet we still must protect ourselves, our family, and our community. We love our parks, so let's work together to keep our parks safe for each of us. Here are the key points. Practice safe distancing. Stay off play structures. Stay off park furniture. And don't share sports equipment. Please follow the park, playground, and trail guidelines to, to engage in safe, no-touch activities. For example, 
Instead of climbing on playground structures, play follow the leader, go birding or fishing or take a hike. Set aside full contact basketball games. Save those great moves for when the virus is no longer a threat. Instead, shoot hoops or play horse with each person using their own basketball. And remember, keep a safe distance. Use this time to perfect your singles, tennis, or pickleball skills and play with members of your own household. Instead of ultimate frisbee or disc golf, throw a frisbee with members of your own household. These are just a few examples, and you can find more information and examples about how to play it safe in parks at parks.lincoln.ne.gov. When using the parks, please remember to keep your dog on a six-foot leash, unless you're at the dog run. Also, please remember to pick up after your pet and take your trash home. You may have noticed many of the trash cans have been removed, and this has been done to protect the safety and the health of park staff. Park restrooms and drinking fountains are also closed. So plan your park outings accordingly by carrying your own water bottle and remember to take your trash home. Right now, when each of us have so many more stresses and our children are increasingly bored, we can find the remedy for that outdoors. Whether you're able to open a window and let the breezes and the bird songs fill your room, or you can sit on your porch, go to your backyard, or take a walk around the block. Even if you're able to ride your bike and play safely in the parks, fresh air and physical activity is good for our health and nature is really good for our soul. I won't take offense you told me to take a hike. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. We know that it is our responsibility to protect the most vulnerable in our community. And these physical distancing efforts and modifications to how we use our parks won't always be required of us. But right now, they will help us get through this incredibly challenging time safely. They will also allow us to continue to keep our parks open and serving as a valued resource to us all. Everyone plays an important role as our community fights this coronavirus together. Our first responders, utility workers, service agencies, food, drug, and other businesses are all still making changes and adding protections in order to maintain essential services. Along with them, we must all do our part in this fight. Stay home as much as possible. Wash your hands often and disinfect common surfaces. If you must go out for work or other necessities, minimize contact with others. Keep a distance of six feet between people and wear a cover over your nose and mouth if possible. Using parks responsibly is another one of these important actions we can take to get through this challenging time together. We have seen outstanding examples across our community of people making the tough but necessary choices to help keep Lincoln safe. And today I'm asking everyone to be a role model as we fight this virus. I invite the public to share their stories about how you are doing your part to protect our community by tagging us in a social media post using either my handle, at Mayor Lyrian, or the City of Lincoln handle, at Lincoln, Nebraska. We wanna hear from you, express our gratitude, and even share your story with others. And with that, I'd like to conclude with some good news. Yesterday at our briefing, we put out a call to manufacturers to pivot their production and make masks, gowns, and other personal protective equipment to help protect those on the front lines of this fight against COVID-19. And we have received an incredible response thus far from companies willing to retool their operations to fill this critical need. Duncan Aviation, for example, has stepped up and offered to manufacture 6,000 face coverings for our first responders. As we speak, Duncan's team is cutting cloth according to specs provided by our health department, and Duncan has mobilized 600 people to sew the cloth and complete the, make, the manufacture of these face coverings. Our city's unified command staff will pick them up and distribute them to Lincoln Fire and Rescue, Lincoln Police Department, and local health care facilities. We are so grateful to, to Duncan for their incredible generosity and assistance in this effort. The University of Nebraska-Lincoln and uh, the Nebraska ethanol industry are working together to produce thousands of gallons of hand sanitizer per week. Uh, today, 
UNL donated over 690 gallons of hand sanitizer to us that will be distributed by our Unified Command staff as they work to fulfill requests made by local hospitals and other healthcare facilities in our community. And you can see some images of that distribution right there. Um, Lincoln Public Schools is also providing vital assistance to our local efforts. LPS works with our Unified Command staff and they've organized staff volunteers at schools to cut material uh, into patterns for personal protective equipment or PPE gowns that are in short supply and we're making those for our first responders. And once that material has been cut from the specific patterns, another group of staff volunteers will sew and finish them for use by our Lincoln Fire and Rescue team. And finally, all the folks at the Lincoln Police Department today asked me to say a big thank you to Runza. Runza delivered cinnamon rolls to all of our police stations this morning. That made them very happy. Um, we are deeply, deeply grateful for the outpouring of support. Um, every act of care and kindness means so much and makes us even prouder to serve all of you here in Lincoln. And with that, I'd love to open it up to questions. And again, uh, Parks and Rec Director Lynn Johnson is here, as well as Council Member Washington, and Pat, uh, Interim Director Pat Lopez from the Health Department, and Steve Beal from the Health Department as well. Questions? Riley from the Journal Star here. Hey, Riley. Um, what, what more um, can um, uh, be disclosed about the person who died? Um, had they been hospitalized um, with the, the virus, um, or did they die at home? I'll let Interim Director Lopez come and answer those questions for you, Riley. Riley, the individual had some underlying health conditions and was already hospitalized when the diagnosis was made. We're still working through some of the investigation, but the close uh, contacts of the individual are self-quarantined um, at this time. But due to the gravity of the illness, um, our investigation took a little bit longer in working through all the details. Can you use the age and gender of the individual? The male in his 50s. At a follow-up question unrelated to that, um, with the new five cases um, today, uh, do you have a, an age range of those? Um, I don't have those right in front of me, but it, I don't want to answer off the top of my head. I'll get you a response, Riley. Great. Um, follow, another follow-up? Um, what um, what is the need to um, kind of decontaminate um, uh, the personal protective equipment that the city has? And um, I understand the, the Lower Platte South will be um, asked to share a facility that it has with the city to do so. Can you talk more about that? We're looking into different areas um, that we can work with, but uh, UNMC, uh, has developed a method for decontamination that's been researched and validated. And we're putting that process uh, into place, but we're working with the whole Southeast region and we'll be doing more work as well with our area. Um, at this time, I'm not sure of all where, where all the sites will be, but we're working on that to extend the life of the PPE. Pat, Andrew Ozaki from KETV Omaha. Uh, what can you tell us about your investigation into the uh, state pen uh, staff person? Okay. You know, the individual uh, resides in, in Lancaster County, so we're obviously working with them, and they have been <clears throat> identified, they're self quarantined and individual family, I mean, they're self-isolating and individual family members' close contacts are self-quarantine. Um, 
the pen itself is a state facility that we don't have jurisdiction over, but we communicate with them and um, they have measures in place that they're addressing any close contacts of the individual that's positive. But exactly what those measures are, I'd have to refer you to the contact at the state um, to give you more information. The state said they were waiting back for your investigation on the contacts that this particular uh, staff member had and where he worked. And, and I guess those are kind of the questions that, that we have. How many people might have been in contact with this particular person or inmates? I, I guess I'm a little confused because we've had several conversations uh, with the state pen, so I'll have to follow up on that. Um, and actually, in the work environment, we talk with um, the individual and we do the investigation, but as with any employer, we're not in the facility seeing exactly who they have contact and where that's at. So we notify them and work with them about when the symptoms occurred and talk about who should be you know, notified and who should self-quarantine. So that is the same thing that we have done with this situation. In your conversations with the Department of Corrections, have you talked about how many of the CDC guidelines they are following um, in their own practices? You know, we make a reference to that, but as I said, Andrew, the state correction system is under the jurisdiction of the state, and so it would be their responsibility to talk about those uh, measures and follow through with them. I, I can say anecdotally, I'm, I'm aware that that's happened with other state facilities, so I have no reason to suspect it's not happening there, but we are not in that day-to-day -day realm with their management staff there. So again, that is something I would, I would refer you back to maybe talking to Dr. Antone, the chief medical officer. And, and one more follow-up question, I, I guess, you know, when you count up all of the prisons that we have in Lincoln, you know, you've got about 2,800 inmates, and that doesn't include staff. How concerned are you about how any outbreak in those particular facilities may affect your hospitals or all your medical facilities? And are those arrangements being made on how those inmates will be cared for? We look at every, we have a lot of, um, areas in our community that we're looking at. We've worked very closely with our city and county corrections. Uh, we have that attributed for, and we look at all of those things in the surge plan that we've been developing along with our healthcare systems. So I guess what will happen with those inmates that need to have critical care? Well, it depends on what's available and what how their illness is. Uh, we've talked about isolating techniques that are available in the facility where they're at. And of course, if their care requires hospitalization, we'll address that as that arises. But those are all the plans we have in place, no different than we have for our long-term care centers or other po large congregate areas in our community. I have a question for Director Johnson. Hi, hi, Lynn. Uh, it's Riley. Hey, Riley you? Star. I'm well. Um, thanks for asking. H how? Uh, what has the attendance been at some of the um, city's larger parks um, in the the area? And is there a concern um, about the um, numbers you've seen so far? running into a situation that Omaha has found itself in? You know, that's a great question, Riley. Um, we don't have any way of counting the number of people who are visiting parks right now. I can tell you anecdotally, we know the numbers have increased, um, particularly when we have a nice day. Um, I know that the staff uh, are spending quite a bit of time picking up trash uh, because of the number of people who are visiting our parks right now, and that's part of our guidance about asking people to, to, to take that home. Um, we have not received any specific complaints about large groups gathering or congregating. Uh, we know that there are large numbers of people's in, people in parks. Um, I would say anecdotally we are getting concerns uh, about 
uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, and as uh, uh, Council Member uh, Washington mentioned, people that are engaged in team sports types activities um, and, and discouraging that type of play. Lynn, this is Bill Shamrock with 1011. And maybe you can answer this, maybe the mayor can answer this. The closed ball fields and the not using playgrounds, is that enforceable by law under the DHM or is it just highly suggested right now? I don't know, Mayor, whether, I don't know that I can answer that question specifically. I, we definitely know that it is highly discouraged for people to be uh, playing on those playgrounds or to be gathering and, and engaging in uh, team activities on those fields. Uh, Director Lopez is making her way up here. I don't know if she's got an answer to that question. Um, I'll try to answer that. Um, you know, most sports, remember, we're trying to limit people and stay within their own family group or uh, association, their household group. So having the fields open and having that sport is a reason that we're saying that I, I, we would certainly, what we're doing now is if those things are uh, brought to our attention through our phone line or through the website where people can uh, share information, we do try to go out and do just some basic education and tell people why it's really the concern about their, their health and safety. And as far as the playground equipment, it's the same thing. We're trying to tell people because we don't have a method to sanitize that, that it's for the, their safety. And so our process is an educational one. Director Lopez, one more question for you as well. Um, just going off of yesterday's numbers, I know there were 18 travel related cases and 13 community spread, three under investigation. These five more, is it fair to say those are also still under investigation or are there more travel related? Because I know you said community spread is still at 13. Right. We're still investigating. We still are working on our investigation on those five, but they are community acquired. That much we know. So the number of community acquired is up to 18 then? Correct. I don't have my number right in front of me, so I'm not going to say that off the top of my head. Okay, okay. So there'd be 18. And just for clarification, that would mean that the three that were still under investigation yesterday are still under investigation? That's correct. Just to clarify, two of those uh, cases from yesterday are under investigation, and one um, is is the individual who is deceased. And just to um, build on what Interim Director Lopez said about uh, the parks, you had asked a question about um, is it enforceable in the parks, the closure of the playgrounds? Well, what, what we're really is enforceable by the directed health measure is if there's a public gathering of 10 or more people, and our parks are public spaces, so we would, um, it would apply if there were more than 10 people gathered in the park, the directed health measure would be enforced, could be enforced. And, uh, you know, we are getting updates on our numbers um, multiple times a day, and we're trying to present those once in the morning and at this briefing. And the most recent round of numbers came just before this briefing. So um, we will make sure that we have everything clarified and updated on our website now that we are aware of the new numbers of community spread. Mayor, I have a question for you, Riley, from the Journal Star. Sure. How, um, how are you feeling? Uh, uh, kind of about the general compliance um, with the directive health measure, um, you know, now that it's um, kind of approaching two weeks since your um, announcement? Mm -hmm. Well, I, all along we've been 
really um, trying to express our gratitude to the community because we know so many people want to do the right thing. We've had so many calls into the health department about how to comply. Um, we, of course, know that our traffic counts are down. Um, we, we see that fewer people are on that morning commute or walking around in our community. But, um, you know, one of the frustrating things about this is that we don't have a lot of a lot of data to work with. Um, it's a lot of anecdotal data that we hear. Um, it's tough to get a grip on, you know, even with traffic um, counts being reduced, which is a good sign, what really matters is mixing. You can drive all around town. You could cruise town all day long uh, if you're by yourself and be really safe. Um, but it's the mixing, it's the close proximity of individuals that you know, increases the risk of the spread of the virus. And that's a really difficult measure to, to get a handle on. So we continue to monitor um, not only these numbers of new cases, which make it clear that COVID-19 is spreading in our community, but also for surges in other, um, in, in the reports that medical care providers uh, give us about, you know, um, negative flu tests and um, that, that we're looking for spikes and other things that could alert us to a potential spike in COVID-19. Mayor Andrew Ozaki from KETV. I was just checking with you. What, what, what will cross that threshold of when you decide to, to close the parks like, like the Omaha mayor did? Uh, you know, that's a discussion that the parks director and I have yet to undertake. I think all of us here in Lincoln want to make sure that these valuable resources for our mental health and physical health are available and an asset to help us really, you know, survive this challenging time of, of isolation. And um, really, we, we should be able to do that. If people comply with the social distancing requirements, if they comply with the reduced number of, you know, if we keep our public gatherings to fewer than 10 people um, and to stay at home as much as possible, really just using our parks and trails as a means of getting some exercise and fresh air. Or as, you know, even Councilwoman um, Washington mentioned, you know, of course you can get out to our parks and trails, but you can still enjoy the outdoors just by going out into your backyard. We, we want these opportunities to exist for our community because we know how challenging this time is. Um, but should we have, uh, a spike in the number, you know, if we have big numbers of people gathering in our parks like they had in Omaha, if we have violence in our parks like they had in Omaha, then we, you know, we'd have to reevaluate our current status. But I, I do want to thank people I've seen on the trails who are social distancing, running six feet apart, uh, walking if they pass each other on the trails, stepping off the trail and walking six feet into the grass and then getting back uh, in onto the trail as they walk their dogs. So. You know, we really appreciate how seriously, uh, anecdotally, that we see people taking these recommendations and guidelines. I have a question, another question from mm -hmm. Pat, from Charlie Rogan in Canmore. Um, and this is regard to the case at the prison again. Do you have results yet? If so, what do they show? Is the prison employee one who had contact with the inmates? If so, and the inmates also affected or tested? Um, um, the we have the results on the individual who's positive <clears throat> that were, lives in our community as far as the inmates we have not had any positive test uh, results uh, sent to us and it really is the staff at the prison that does the investigation and just to remind everyone they do have a health team at the prison and they actually have a prison hospital um, and they follow those standard procedures for investigation, um, just like we do, and they would be the best ones to identify if this individual works in an area where there would be um, individuals housed at the prison uh, are, uh, or if they work in a different area. I also wanted to tell you that today, um, <clears throat> Our cases, there's three females in their 40, one in their 40s, one uh, in the 50s, and one in the 60s. And there are two males, uh, one in the 40s and one in the 50s. Are there any more questions? 
right. Well, if not, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate your time and attention and all that you're doing to help us get the message out about how to stay safe and stay connected and stay home during this time. Thank you.